On today's episode, I speak to the multi-talented Ernie St. Clair about his journey in the entertainment industry. Ernie, a music artist, producer, and actor, has been in the industry for more than two decades, having his start as part of Afro Z on the Coca-Cola Pop Stars. During this episode, Ernie speaks about the many lows that he faced, but more importantly, the lessons that he's learned. So today on the call, we have Ernie, Ernie Sinclair. Ernie, how are you doing, sir? I'm good, my brother. Thank you so much for having me, man. And I just want to commend you for, for having great content and, you know, pushing the envelope and the positivity. I like it. I mean, uh, if I think about back when I first met you mm -hmm. uh, as a neighbor, you know, mm -hmm. and, and now to see the progression, it's always good to be associated with people. People like that, you know what I'm saying? So I commend you, my brother. Well done. Thank you. And that's the thing is that, you know, what people don't understand is that it doesn't matter where we are right now. It's just about what actions are we taking to grow into the person who we know we can True. become. And that is one of the reasons I started this, you know, this podcast show is just to, to have inspiring figures like yourself on the show to, you know, to speak about what your journey has been like. Because some of us are caught up in this, in this belief that, it's going to be easy or that some people have it easier or that some people don't face the obstacles, but everybody faces their own share of failures, hardships and obstacles. But it's about how do I overcome this? How do I still summit the mountain in spite of this? So I really, really love the fact that I got to have you on the show and I'm looking forward to our conversation. So on that point, Ernie, do you want to tell us who is Ernie? So, uh, I'm a boy from Cape Town, Lotus River. And uh, I, if I must put myself in words, I'm a, I'm a creative, um, I'm a dad, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a lover, I'm a philanthropist. And um, basically, if you're asking me my, like my background as people know me in the entertainment industry, um, a lot of people know me from the Coca-Cola pop stars, Mm -hmm. You know, when I came into the industry as a professional. Um, but before that, I studied, uh, I, I was privileged to study um, the arts, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that's where I owned everything. That was way before pop stars. So I entered pop stars around about 2002. I had the privilege to do to that competition. And um you know, that was, the, that was one of the key things that opened the door for me. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I started back in 1998 already performing on theater production. So my background is basically arts. That means drama, dance, music. That was my majors at, at high school. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say that is something to be grateful for as well. I mean, if I never had the opportunity to actually, you know... Um, go do the stuff or my parents give me the opportunity because I never had it easy. As I, as I said, I come from Lotus River, you know, yeah. I come from what they call the flats, you know, mm -hmm. the Cape flats and I'm proud of it, you know? Um, so things wasn't easy always financially, mm -hmm. but the fact that my parents could give me the gifts of deciding always which, which direction I want to go in my career. Mm -hmm. I think that was the biggest gift ever. Yeah, You know, because we never had it, like, growing up in the Cape Flats, you know what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And it's not even like they would say in the Cape Flats, the Coupa is it. The Coupa is it still, you know, like actual houses yeah. on an actual plot. Mm -hmm. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're not from Cape Town, South Africa, for all my international fans and supporters who, who, who's been following me, I thank you guys. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Carl's show. Welcome to my kitchen, my house, you're in my crib now. Um, if you don't know about um, the Cape Flats, you know, it's like, you can't even call it apartments because mm -hmm. apartments is still lavish, you know what I'm saying? But everyone's living like sardines and that is just a concoction for a lot of breeding ground for a lot of different things, you know, gangsterism, drugs, poverty, so that was a blessing for me. And I thank my parents till today when I come sit in my crib mm -hmm. and they tell me 
a good I'm doing. I say, you know, if it wasn't for you, mom and dad, I know things were tough. Things wasn't always easy. You couldn't always give us what we wanted. But the best gift in life that you could ever give me was my education. Mm-hmm. You know, so even if I may backtrack between the time of pop stars and me growing up studying the arts, I also did sound engineering, mm-hmm. which my parents also gave me the privilege because I I was good at woodwork, right? That was going to be like I was very good at woodwork. Like my uncle, my uncle is a yacht builder. He builds big yachts for, you know, he's actually retired now, but he used to build big yachts that you see at the V&A waterfront and stuff like that. So like I runs in the family, both of my uncles. In fact, my one uncle is still in the game. So I honed that skill as well of, you know, workmanship, being good with woodwork, building stuff. And I was also very good at drawing. So I wanted to go into mm-hmm. architectural side so i had these options i always had these options and that was a that's a great um you know tool to have and a gift to have to be able to choose and your family being able to you know give you the opportunity to actually choose no matter the circumstances yeah. so i had the choice to be like i'm going to be a draftsman architecture do my n2 and n1 or am i going to go in the arts and i asked my family like you know what do you suggest i say i can do whatever i want to do and I kept on doing the mm-hmm. arts. And if you look about 20, 26 years later, I'm here, you know. Um, yes. So that's a little bit about me. I don't know if that summed it up. Yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful, a really beautiful story, you know. And there are a couple of things that I want to highlight that many people sometimes we just, we hear but we overlook. And the fact that you said you had options, okay. You had a choice. And that is how ultimately what makes us human beings different from other animals is that we are able to decide, we are able to make a choice. And sometimes in our life, there are things that we, we can't choose, okay, at this particular moment, we can't choose what, what area you grew up in. But the fact that you could say, you know what, I'm choosing to create a different future for myself. I'm choosing to grow into the mountain I, I can see myself yeah. becoming. So through that, you decide to say what actions align with that. So really sure. powerful. And then also the fact that you say that, you know, ultimately we all stand on the shoulders of giants. And sometimes people think that they see your success. Um, they think, you know what, it's simply because of you. But ultimately there are people in the background. There are people who believed in you when you maybe didn't believe in yourself. There are people who guided you when you felt lost. And that just shows that it's about the people we also associate ourselves with. If you don't have parents who are there to support you, find people who can support you. That is your ultimate decision, yeah. the choice that you have to include people that speak into your future on your team. Yeah. And then um, obviously at the age of 15, you, you said you got introduced into the entertainment world, really, um, even though you say you were doing that for four years before, yeah, since 1998. But... In 2002, you really actually, you know, came into the public's eye, um, find yourself as a 15-year-old on on TV. Tell me, how did that change who Ernie was and how you saw yourself and what you could do? I was, in fact, I was 19. So I started to do the arts um, when I was 16, actually, that, when mm-hmm. I, 1998, when I was 16, when I first performed okay. um, in, in, in the artscape, which is now... Yeah, Artscape, it was then, it was Nico Milan. Um, and I was in theater mm-hmm. stages. And then I decided, nah, I don't see myself doing this. I was performing with Mark Lottering, a lot of actors that I'm privileged to act with again now. Um, but I just, that time, that's all you could really do. We never had other opportunities. Um, so anyway, I was 19 years old when I entered pop stars. And 1995 is when I started to do acting and drama mm-hmm. and all this stuff. That's my studies. So anyway, fast forward, that experience, that is something, if you may ask me how that was, everything that I'm doing up until to now is still kind of surreal in a, in a, mm-hmm. in a meaning, in the sense of, it's kind of like, wow, I actually manifested this. Mm-hmm. And that's humbling, you know, because 
everything I've put out subliminally back then, I, I never understood the law of attraction. Um, it was all just subliminal things that I, I believe, you know, and everything starts with belief, even if you don't understand the concept of law of attraction. But if I sum that up, it was amazing because I told myself before I'm going to be 21 years old, I'm mm -hmm. going to be signed to a major label, mm -hmm. you know, and um, as it is like the gratification is there in a the sense of like your, your, your pride is built up. You, it's mm -hmm. still humbling because you're like that little touch from the universe, the almighty that made it manifest because it's like thinking of it as a seed, you know, we yeah, can yeah. plant a seed, but the universe still puts life in that, you know what I'm saying? For that seed mm -hmm. to bud and then you need to nurture it. So I kind of look at it like that. So mm -hmm. it was an amazing, humbling experience. Um, was signed to Virgin Records, um, South Africa. Mm -hmm. And um, I toured the world. We were going to, you know, yeah, I toured the world, toured South Africa first. I went on my first plane trip, you know. That gave me, like, the, the opportunities as a kid from the Cape Flats. So just mind-blowing to perform with all the greatest artists mm -hmm. in South Africa. We shared the stage with Ja Rule, you know, um, who's had platinum-selling artists, Grammy artists. And that was definitely the the door opener for me, you mm -hmm. know, as a performer, as an entertainer, as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Because soon after that, say about 05, I then also manifested the other part of my career where I said to myself, when I get in and I'm here, I'm going to now um, form my own recording company, mm -hmm. which is Pipeline Records. So that's when I started Pipeline Records. And, you know, Nice. Uh, you, you mentioned something really powerful there is that, you know, it was a door, it, it basically opened the door for you, okay, to who you could become. But it's also very important for us to realize that a door opening doesn't necessarily mean that, you know what, everything is going to be easy. You understand? Sometimes once you go through the door, you realize that there's things that you never knew is on the other side of the door, other challenges that you need to overcome. Because it's easy for you, like you say, um, when you when you guys won the pop stars and you started touring and everything, um, it's easy for, like you, like you say, to get lost in that, that life. You understand that, oh, I've made it, I've arrived. And many people do make this mistake where, um, and, and it's easy, especially in the entertainment industry, it's easy to see how, you know, careers are very short lived, you understand? Because ultimately you in the entertainment industry because it's about being in, in the public's eye. You need to be um, top of mind. And that's really what keeps you there. But many people easily just start fading away to the background and you forget in about them. No, for sure. and, mm -hmm. it, now, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. I mean, I'm I'm giving you the sum up of it, but I mean, I think the show is about telling people about the hard times and how exactly. you actually persevere that, right? So if if I'm a go in, in depth, you know, I, I did struggle with drugs at the time as well. Okay. You know, um, in fact around that time which was, uh, but I overcame it quickly. It was only a three month spin, you know, um, that was around the time, when, you know, tip was a big prevalence in, mm -hmm. in, in Cape Town, South Africa. And, you know, I, I experimented, it was of course with people that I loved, it wasn't with people that I would have thought was, you know, made me any harm. So I thought it was good for me at the time. But then, you know, in that failure, I quickly decided and, and, and saw, where is this going to take me? You know, my money is doing, health is dwindling, mentally, physically. And I mean, I always had a grasp on if it always mental is the most important thing. I mean, if you're broken spiritually, you're broken, you know? Yes. And um, thank God it was a three months, like, you know, period, but it felt like three years for me mm -hmm. because, um, of course, when you're going through the withdrawal symptoms of certain drugs like meth, mm -hmm. um, there's a certain, you know, when those drugs leave your body, um, you know, you get the withdrawal symptoms and et cetera. Mm -hmm. But 
I already conquered it when I decided, I knew to myself, I already conquered it when I decided to, li- to extract myself from that group. Um, not necessarily saying that they were bad because I, mm-hmm. I made the choice. Um, but I had to extract myself from that group. I, I, dis- I knew to myself that this is bad for me mentally, physically, and financially. So it's not going to take me anywhere. Mm-hmm. And thank God I stopped right there. I didn't need no rehab. I didn't need no anything because I'm, you know, I don't have an addictive personality. I would see myself as obsessive because when, when I when I tackle anything, you know, I tackle it full force mm-hmm. and I go, um, you know, I go hard. Yeah. So that was one key factor for me too and, and, and just a process of... Um, no self-love and, mm-hmm. and visualization as well, like seeing myself out of this and this is not going to take me anywhere. Then going back to Joburg, we had to then travel. We, when Afro-Z was formed, the group that I was in, we had to leave Cape Town. We had to leave the comfort zone, mm-hmm. you know, because we never got all the gifts and stuff that the other guys yeah. received. So we had to work hard, kind of like the underdogs. And then... Um, you know, I also had to sleep on the floor when mm-hmm. I went to Johannesburg and people don't know that. So that is all things that I'm not saying it because I want people to feel sorry for me or I want people to pity me, mm-hmm. but it's things, things that built my character and mm-hmm. made me kind of like build calluses on my mind. You know what I'm saying? That kind of prepare myself and that's how I look at failure and that's how I always constantly look at um, challenges. Because, mm-hmm. like you said, challenges is never, ever going to leave us. Mm-hmm. You are living in a fairy tale world to think that challenges, the more higher you go, the more things you pursue, the more challenges you're going to get because there's new lessons that needs to be learned. And funny enough, there's always things that the universe kind of throws at you. But mm-hmm. instead of looking at it like, these are things that is going to break me. These are things that's going to build me. That's our kind of, that's always perspective. Um, so if I look back now, like I said, this is all character building stuff, man. And, and after that, I came back. I, I said to myself as well, my company is now, my first company, my very first company is... Um, now established, now I need to come back and take that to the next level, which was Pipeline Records. Came back to Cape Town, started my um, my company. Mm-hmm. You know, I got an agent that represented me and I was also privileged to, to do commercials all over the world as well. Many big commercials like Nokia, some commercials for Spur, you know, other brands in South Africa like Capitec, um, brands for in UK called George. So I was just, it's, a, it's, it's an amazing run, you know, mm-hmm. and what you put out, you know, actually manifests. I just want to re- rewind back to what you mentioned earlier, you know, the fact that um, when you say that, you know, things weren't easy and um, when you started coming to the entertainment area, it was easy for you to yeah. focus them to, like you say, substance abuse, trying out. And like you said, it wasn't, it wasn't bad people you were around that you were doing it with, but just these people weren't good for where you wanted to go. And that is very important for us to realize. Sometimes our friends can be good people. Yeah. Okay? They can have great models, great values. They can be great company. But are sure. they great for who you need to become? Are they great okay. for who you need to be spending your time with? Are they value in that adding value in that area? That's what oh, you need to show sure. yourself. Oh, Another sure. thing you mentioned about having that anchor thought to be able to evaluate, is this in alignment with where I see myself. Is this in alignment with where I want to go? And you say that, you know, mm-hmm. no, the drugs is not going to help that. It's not taking me on the path to where I want to go. And that's why you said, okay, because it's not in alignment, I'm eliminating that from my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and one more powerful thing that I really like to say there is that you have an obsessive personality, okay? In terms of when you want something, you're going to see it through. And what most people don't realize is that we all have this obsessive nature in us, okay? But it's about being obsessive about the things that are great for you and for who you want to become. So it's about saying, you know what, this 
is valuable to my journey or this is valuable to who I want to become. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to become obsessive about this because, you know, there's this, this notion that when you are going too hard on something that is good for your future self, that it's bad. Um, but I'm always saying that, you know what, you need to be all in whether it's business, whether it's sport, if you want to be a champion, if you want to be a winner at it, you need to be all in. You need to be obsessed about this, thinking about it. How can I overcome this? How can I reach the top? Amazing, amazing, amazing. And, and, and what I want to say on that is as well is like, I find the, the pleasure in pain where mm -hmm. I'm at now. And when you're at that stage, it's a great stage to be at because like you said, it was always evaluating, always auditing yourself and, and understanding. Because like what I teach my kid now is, um, I think Thomas Edison said, he didn't fail a thousand times to make mm -hmm. life. He tried a thousand times and found the right formula mm -hmm. to create that. You see, because we often, the culture that we, are, we, that we come from, we always say, don't do that. Yeah. You're always taught to kind of like be scared of failure. Mm -hmm. When now I thrive in failure because if things are too good, that is not good. Because mm -hmm. only in the failures actually is where you learn. Only mm -hmm. in the failures. Because mm -hmm. you don't learn anything every time when you win, you know? Yeah. That's why I look at fighters too, being a martial artist, and you look at guys like Conor McGregor that comes back and, 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 and always wins his opponent maybe on, on, on the rematch. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of look at it like that, you know, um, because the first time you're going to study your opponent and you're going to come back and reevaluate yourself mm -hmm. and add little things to your thing. And it's like life is a fight. You know, that's why I love martial arts so much. And I see you doing your martial arts as well. And I commend you, bro, because that's actually my background too. That got me into the movies is mm -hmm. kickboxing. But anyway, let me not digress. But you get what I'm saying? It's like yeah. that pain, that pain must become pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's like getting up in the morning is not 5 a.m. in the morning. It's not pleasurable. Getting up 6 a.m. It's not pleasurable. You know, going to go train and going to go run at time, it's not pleasurable. It's like Muhammad Ali, I look at him as well. I look at all the greats. Muhammad Ali said, I hate training, mm -hmm. but I love what it gives to me, you know? Oh, cool. And I think that's what keeps, if I can motivate anybody, is like that is what keeps us from pursuing our dreams, mm -hmm. is the fact that we are so scared of failure or we're so concerned about what other people is going to think. I run at this dolo, meaning I'm at this solo. I don't need no hype, man. I don't need no validation. The higher you go, you know, people might think it's lonely, but the more you go up, you must conserve your energy. You know, everything is about energy, about chi. And, and it's like you said, sometimes about who you surround yourself with, but sometimes who you don't surround yourself with yeah. either. Mm -hmm. Because the spending time, it's like meditation, it's about spending time internally, mm -hmm. spending time with yourself. You know, those are the things that shape you when you go out there, because that, that is knowing yourself. When you always hear people say, know thyself. Yes. That's when you know yourself. And, and, and those are the things that, in, and another inspiring thing that I can give people is like, pick up a book and read, man. Those are the things. I'm a kid that was, you know, claimed to be dyslexic, you know, laughed at when you had to do your oral or read in front of the class. Mm -hmm. But I always believed in myself. I, I always pushed. You know, you're always going to have people that's going to doubt you. You're always going to have people that's going to laugh at you. Mm -hmm. You pursue something and you need to stand there. And that's just sort of the fear that people get that keeps them away from stuff. Yeah. So it's like, and this, is what, this is what I was claiming to be. My teacher's dyslexic, mm -hmm. not a reader. I became a lover of reading back in 05. That's when I opened my first company. I picked up a book 
And I was like, this is something that can edify me. This is actually something that I love, something that is not given to me, but something that I want to read. And it was Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. And from there, I just became a lover of reading. I've got a library and it's ever growing, you know? So um, that's something that I want to inspire the youth to as well. All my supporters, some of you guys know that I do love that. Um, I see myself as a spiritual person. But just like wanting to always, always wanting to learn more because it's a never-ending story. This is a never-ending story. You know, it's uh, always like I look at it's like martial arts. I feel I know nothing. Mm-hmm. I always know nothing. Um mm-hmm. It keeps you humble. It keeps you ever growing. It's like your cup is half empty and half full, mm-hmm. you know. And then also being like water, like mm-hmm. Bruce mm-hmm. Lee says, you know. Exactly. Be shapeless. Form. Yes. Formless like water. You put mm-hmm. water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a glass, it becomes the glass. You put water into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Mm-hmm. You see water can crash or water can flow. Be water, my friend. When people read, they don't look, really look deeper into, for example, a quote like that, which is extremely powerful. But for those that maybe who don't understand that quote, what he's actually saying is be able to adapt to your circumstances, to your surroundings. Sure. Like you say, be formless, be able to go with the flow so that you can get what you want. And many of us, we are so fixed in who we think we are or who the world has shaped us, our hardships, our difficulties have shaped us to be, that we can't see ourselves waking up two hours earlier, or I can't see myself as learning this new skill, or I can't see myself as being a student again because I think I've already achieved all I can. And that stops so many of us. And then another powerful thing you mentioned there is about, you know, as you as you progress in um, in your career, it's also not only about who you surround yourself with. It's about having a a do not do list, essentially. You understand? And I, I think that's also very valuable. Like you said, as you as you grow, as you mature, as you start becoming more of who you know you need to be. It's about then saying, you know what? How do I conserve my energy? How do I focus on myself? Okay. How do I make time for introspection? Many people don't know themselves. So it's not only about consuming, but it's also about going inward, which is really powerful. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And then um, you mentioned another thing. <laughs> Completely lost track on that now. Um, but yeah, so it's really, it's, it's really like, like you said, the reading, even the fact about the reading, the lessons we can get from reading. Um, and what I realized, because I was also not a reader growing up, um, like, you know, growing, on the Cape Flat, growing up on the Cape Flats, we're not really taught to read. Um, and even at school where you were forced to read yeah. books you did not like. So it was more of a forced thing. But when I started discovering that there are books that speaks to me, that understands me, okay, with people who face the same challenges that I face, okay, yeah. that is when I started falling in love with reading. And I was also a bad reader, but that I progressively got better. So it's not about where you are, guys. It's about are you willing to go through the work to become all that you can become because this journey of life is never ending. Like you said, okay, it's a journey. There's no end point. If you thought you arrived, if you think you arrived, then that's it. There's no more growing for you. There's no more going for you. Okay. Yeah. And then another thing you you were saying about, um, we were relating to winning and most people don't realize this in order to win. You'll probably have to fail a couple of times. Okay. And a, a, a difference depending on what your pursuit is, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be rejection. But it's about how do you say, you know what, this is something I'm going to do in spite of that. So to really win means you need to learn how to lose. And many people in society have no idea how to lose. When they lose, they automatically lose hope. They lose faith. Yeah. They lose the belief yeah. that they're able to go all the way. Yeah. That it's is just another mistake. Yeah. Here we go. It's just another, it's just another, it's, think of it like a scientist. You know, you're in the lab. Scientist, the first bomb is going to go off and it's like, ah, let me go at this again, you know, and you're in the, in the lab again, trying your stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's all about your imagination, you know, your imagination is the playground, you know, it's like the theater of the mind. That's what I look at it. And um, 
I'll be talking about all of this stuff in my YouTube channel as well. I'll mm-hmm. be going in depth, you know, like the things that has helped me to kind of shape my mind and, and, and form these calluses, like things that I do for priming. Mm-hmm. I mean, like training, like meditation, you know, um, some pop psychology that I've dwelled into as well. Um, guided hypnotherapy, all of these type of things that, that has helped me, I want to share with the world and I want to share it because that's where I'm at and I'm, I'm, I'm doing that already with my um, my philanthropy project which is mm-hmm. um, Grow and Sustain Africa and Grow and Sustain Africa is basically we go and we inspire the youth, we help um, the, the old age with uh, food relief and um, the youth development involves, you know, um, you know, motivational uh, speaking, you know, uplifting their spirits. And of course, going down to the core level of their mind with the hypnotherapy and uh, mindfulness, mm-hmm. you know, meditation, etc. because that's the subliminal level that we want to touch and change a generation because it takes about 25 years for you to change a generation. Mm-hmm. So can, this is the start of it. And, um, you know, we'll get back at the score hopefully 25 years later and see how far we've grown, mm-hmm. you know, um, doing some great things around Africa, firstly. Oh, you know, we're spending about 100 million USD annually. That's the goal, you know, because we would then be valued at a billion in mm-hmm. 10 years' time. That is, that's the goal because... It's not to tell you how great we are or what I'm doing is that should always be the the core of your goals as well, like a similar to doing. Mm -hmm. You're not just growing yourself and becoming a better you. You're taking that value and you're really passionate about changing other people's lives. And that is the key. That's so much fulfilling. I mean, I'm even getting goosebumps just talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Because... It's, they say it's always better to give than to get, you know. So one of my company goals was always to encompass our ethos is to have a goal that's bigger than us, mm-hmm. you know. So I'm really, this came about, I was already doing things like this back in 05 as well, going into schools, doing youth development, doing uh, edutainment is one of our stuff as well. <clears throat> we, we motivate the kids through edutainment. That is through the arts, getting them into the arts so that they can have a different perspective and have a, have a talent mm-hmm. because there's so much talent and taking that and taking all that negative energy and transmutating it because that's all what it is about. You know, We don't have an outlet sometimes for us to transmute that energy. So I'll be talking about all of this stuff in my YouTube, which is going to be amazing. So I hope it's going to be in here. Yes. You can find my Instagram. We'll put the links here. I bet Kyle is going to do that amazing editing um, on Twitter as well. Where I have some little tidbits of motivation. Um, and uh, yeah, subscribe and check it out. You know, it's going to be fun because I'll be sharing my knowledge. That's where I'm at. I want to do that. And it gives me pleasure, you know what I'm saying, to, to just impart with this knowledge that, that has taken me to where I have gone. You know? Exactly. And that's, that, that's ultimately it. when you, like you say, what we're doing is not for our selfish need. When you are doing something for selfish need because you want to be the best all the time, ultimately yeah. you, know, the motiv- you will have motivational lacks. You won't feel like you want to continue. There will come a time where you hit the roadblock. But when you realize that it's bigger than you, that you're creating something that has to outlive you and it's about other people, then you're willing to go all the way and keep pushing, like you say, to yeah. create who you need to become so you're able to really help those out there who yeah. don't have people like you around to speak to them. You understand? So yeah. amazing, like you said, it's an amazing initiative being able to go out and guide the younger generation and just change the narrative because ultimately that's what we need to change. Change the narrative of success, of loving yourself, of who you can become a failure of living a full life. That's what we need to do. What is perceived yeah. as, as success? Because a, as we know, in Cape Town, in, in the culture we came from, uh, what is success? Many people see success as having the latest car and the latest clothes. That's it. 
You understand? But success is not that. Success is way more than that. Because many of these people, they can, they can flash it, but there's nothing, there's nothing beyond that. They also, in, at the end of the day, success is about, am I fulfilled as an individual? Am I becoming all that I can become? Am I reaching my targets? And, I am, and am I making the impact that I need to make in this life? And, and maybe, maybe we don't need to impact outside because we always say charity begins at home, right? Mm -hmm. It starts in your household, you know? Mm -hmm. When it's going to start with you as a parent or as a child, maybe that's going to, you know, that mm -hmm. energy is going to touch the people around you. And that's ultimately where we need to be at, you know, um, because charity starts at home and necessarily don't need to go out there and do things like that, maybe because you can't and you don't have the time, but let it start at home, you know, so tune in, subscribe, check it out. Mm -hmm. I'll be seeing everything. I mean, um, there was always, like you said, there's always challenges that I'm that you're gonna reach in your in your career, you know. And if I look at it, even before me pursuing being in Hollywood and doing doing Hollywood movies now, mm -hmm. you know, I reached roadblocks again. So there's always mm -hmm. roadblocks. I went up. I had the privilege to perform with my band in Dubai, and I was in Dubai in my hotel room spent six months there, locked myself in there. And I was like, I literally went out about five times. Mm -hmm. That's how committed I was because I bought myself equipment for my studio. So I was saving most of my cash and I was mapping out my dreams. And this is what I want to say to, to you guys before we wrap this up as well is, yo, you need to have a vision board. You need to map this out. Like, even now, I've got things mapped out in front of me. It's like when my friends and my colleagues came into my hotel room, they said, what are you building a bomb? <laughs> you know, because that's how it looks. It's not in like Hollywood movies when you see the people, it's like putting this thing up and you're seeing this little chart that is going like that. I just took this little scrapbook and I was like, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. Uh, um in a couple of years' time, I want to be a lead in Hollywood movies. Mm -hmm. I want to write a book. I've got a book as well that I'm going to share that I'm actually going to, my ebook is going to be free on, on my blog. Mm -hmm. And you'll probably get the link soon. I'm, I'm releasing it soon on my um, Instagram. I want to write a book. I want to be in the lead in, in Hollywood movies. I want, to, I, I want to do Forex. I want to be trading in stocks. Um, I want to, you know, change my body, etc., uh, etc. Et cetera. Spiritually, where I want to be at, I had all of these things plucked out on the end. Again, it's not to tell you how great I am because I'm no greater than you. It's to tell you that just for that thought process and mapping out, you, you can do it as well. And you know, Carl, it's like, it's like, it's not that hard, but it takes some work, you know. And those things that I had stuck on my wall all manifested in seven years. Wow. In seven years. And seven, seven is such a perfect number as well. Um, and I look back and it's again, it's not to say how great I am. Mm -hmm. Every time the higher I go, it humbles me more because I can never forget that light from the Cape Flats. Yeah. You know, um, I'm still that kid. I'll never ever change, you know, from mapping out my goals. Mm -hmm. I also remember coming back home to South Africa and everything went south, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll be talking more about this. I mean, I lost everything. I had to start from scratch because now it's like the universe was like, oh, you want to do all the stuff? Let me test you. Yeah. Let me test your chin, you know, and the universe tested my chin. And I was out there, of course, questioning myself a little bit. But slowly, every single day, I just did something. It's like Walt Smith says, I don't go out to build this amazing building or wall. I just lay that brick every single day. And it might not be perfect also. Don't strive for perfection because that is false. Don't strive for perfection. Um, because it's fake and it's not real. 
you know. Don't strive for perfection. Just try every single day to do something towards that little goal that, mm -hmm. that, you, that you're doing. And when I woke up, now I wake up and I'm like, wow. Because it's like a snowball effect. Yeah. I tell myself I want to be a lead. The universe allows me to people. I run into someone that, that hooks me up here. Mm -hmm. And so on and so on. And it's like a snowball. And I start being a, a little lead here, getting a couple of lines, performing with a Hollywood actor, performing with a UK actor lead. So, mm -hmm. and I'm like, wow, it blows my mind. You know, this happens. And for the last 11 years, that is what got me through a lot of things. It's like the visualization, which is what everyone knows today is mm -hmm. everyone thinks probably that the law of attraction doesn't work or the secret secret is based on the law of attraction. And I go by it. I go by it a hundred percent. 11 years. If I look back, that is what got me a Psalm nomination. That is what got me onto this Hollywood movies to rub shoulders with the best mm -hmm. to then do. Cause remember I told you, I said, I'm going to be a lead in, 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 in action movies. Now, I don't know how this is going to happen yet. I know that I just need to work on my acting when I get back. I go for acting lessons. I work on my martial arts. I'm in there training every single day. And boom, 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 boom. I just see it manifesting, manifesting. Like I said, I run into someone that says, oh, you should try this. You should go here, audition for this. One, two, three, you see me. I'm out there. As a, I was two weeks, I was like a, an extra, what they would call it, is a um, an action extra, uh -huh. which is the background um, guys who do some action, you know. But I'm like, oh, I need to be in stunts. That's why I need to be, you know. Two weeks later, they see my talent. They're like, nah, this guy's got the, this guy's got the goods. They bump my pay up four times higher, and I get, you know, rub shoulders with the biggest stunt guys in South Africa, mm -hmm. Cape Town. And now I'm like, okay, it's possible. Mm -hmm. You know, and snowball and snowball and snowball and snowball. So, but I'll be covering all of that. I know we don't have a lot of time. Yeah, I'll be covering all of that in my in my in my YouTube. That's really powerful, you know, because so so many of us don't realize, like you said, um, the law of attraction works. But there's another there's another there's another part that many people overlook when it comes to the law of attraction. And you mentioned it there as the action you would take in. Here we go. Every single day. It's not only believing and telling yourself it's going to happen, but how are you how are you putting that brick there because ultimately you need to the way you manifest it in the world is not simply just by thinking about it and dreaming about it but it's about taking action every single yeah. day like you say where it was you going to train or where it was you going to say you know what i'll become an extra those are all actions that keeps in alignment with the vision that you had and that's how you <laughs> like you said the ball just kept rolling that's facts, that's facts bro yeah. that is Facts, facts, facts. It is the biggest thing. And I think sometimes in that, when people get that, they, they think, yes, you need the vision board. You need to map it out. You need to write it down. Those are also things. And that's also a little bit part of the action. But like you're saying, that is definitely the biggest part of it. Action mm -hmm. is, I mean, mapping out the dreams and goals is here. Action is that one part. And then you see you know, everything falls in alignment because it comes back to that. I know this is a, you know, whatever seed this is in my hand. Mm -hmm. I got to plant. It. I know what it is, but unless I don't plant the seed, it's not going to grow. Yeah. So now I need to plant it. Then I need to wait and have patience. And that sometimes is what we can't do. But that's essential. Then we need to nurture every single day. That's the action. Watering it every single day. Caring for it. Loving it because that's what nurturing is about. And so with time, you will see that sprout and sprout and sprout. And soon we have whatever fruit it is or whatever, you know, exactly. tree it is you're growing, you know. But I do... I, I definitely agree with you 100% people. You can't forget the biggest part in the law of attraction is action. And that's yeah. what I did every single day. We do it every single day. Get up, 
do something towards your goal. And even if you fail, again, like I said, you're doing something small. It doesn't need to be perfect. Don't judge yourself to and, 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 and undermine yourself if you didn't get it 100%. Yeah. But you try that day. Awesome. Try. Awesome, Ernie. I love the analogy also about you. You have to water that seed every yeah. single day. Water that seed, water that seed, water that seed. And over time, you will start realizing that that tree is growing into the yeah. of your dreams and it's bearing the fruit that not only you can sure. eat, but the people <clears throat> around you can eat from. It can bear shade to people around you. It needs the shade. Amen. So you need to. It's your obligation to go and water that. Water that seed, water it. I like that. I love that, bro. I really love that. I love that. It's uh, true. And it's true what you're saying. It's before we wrap it up. It's like, um, there's a, a book, I think it's a science of getting rich. Mm-hmm. And the core of that book is for, you know, I got the audio book to get it in my mind quicker. Mm-hmm. And it's about five hours to six hours long. And for the whole oh, four hours of that book, they're talking about that thing. Wow. That it's your obligation. Mm-hmm. It's your obligation to be successful. Exactly. Because for you, firstly, you owe it to yourself because you can't also just run yourself thin for people if you can't, if you don't have enough for yourself. Mm-hmm. So you got to do it for yourself first. And then that success, like you say, is going to bear fruit and also going to be a shade for people. I love that. Exactly. And that's how I look at it because... Science of Getting Rich speaks about that. You need to be successful. Mm-hmm. You can't help people too if you're not successful. Exactly. I can't go in there and give if I don't have. Mm-hmm. So I need to have so that I can go give. Exactly. So that's, that's a beautiful analogy, brother. Beautiful. Definitely. Ernie, I'd just like to say thank you so much for being on the show today and sharing your journey with us, your pursuit of your dreams and becoming the best that you can become during this lifetime. Thank you, man. Thanks for listening. For um, I thank you for having me. It's a pleasure jumping on the call with you. I know it's uh, our schedules didn't first align, but the universe, uh, you know, initially aligned. So thank you. I, I commend you. And keep on doing what you do, my brother. All the blessings to what you're doing. I love it. I feel the energy. It's positive. It's pure. The intent is right. Um, and I love to associate myself with people like that that can... Um, that can edify me. So this was definitely a pleasure jumping on the call with you. So all the best to you and your family, your wife. Thank Keep you. on doing what you do. I hope to come over there to Thailand. Um, sure. <laughs> I want to come over there to it. Yeah. Learn, you know? Looking forward to something like that, man. Um, but okay. once again, thank you so much for um, the wealth of wisdom that you shared on the show today and just all your insight and your experiences for being real and, and for inspiring people out there to take action, start watering their seeds. No doubt. Take care, my brother. Thank you.